The opening ceremony of the Paris Olympic Games this Friday 26th was full of satire and ridicule. The opening ceremony featured a mockery of the Last Supper, performed by members of the LGBT community. A hermaphrodite smurf appeared on the table, singing and causing the drag queens to rejoice. One of the pseudo-apostles shows his private parts outside his pants while dancing, but that's okay. The show justifies it. The images have quickly spread around the world, and there are thousands upon thousands of comments on social networks crying out against this lack of respect for Christians. And not just anonymous people, but also celebrities who do not understand how France dared to do this at the Olympic Games. One of them was the journalist Thomas Guache, who lashed out live against the performance and its mockery of Christianity. It is unacceptable, a very serious offense and a terrifying thing. Let's see the day when these people dare to do something similar to Muhammad. On the other hand, Javier Tebas has described it as unacceptable, disrespectful, and infamous. Using the image of the Last Supper at the Paris Olympic Games is an insult to those of us who are Christians. Where is the respect for religious beliefs? Defended the president of the Spanish La Liga. Spanish MEP Jorge Bouchade also said that Macron's France has shown the world its defeat, its decadence, and its rottenness, devoid of beauty and full of anti-Christian hatred. These are just a few examples of the thousands of users who have wanted to show their rejection of performance art on social media. They argue that the performance is decadent, satanic, and despicable. They wonder what the relationship is between the Olympic Games and mockery of Christianity and point out that mockery is always directed at Christianity and not at other religions. They do not have the courage to make a parody of Muhammad. And if that weren't enough, at the end of a sensual and aerial choreography that evokes how desire is generated, performed by dancers dressed in the rainbow colors of the LGBT flag, two men were seen kissing and a loving trio locked in a room. The LGBT issue played a central role. There was a fashion show and concerts with drag queens, people in drag, who, according to the organizers, wanted to show the diversity of France. These characters with little clothing, a lot of vulgarity, women with beards or drag queens, took center stage in the final part of the event. The ceremony was peppered with Agenda 2030 propaganda from start to finish. They promoted love as if it were a polyamorous and homosexual relationship between three young people with queer aesthetics. There were kisses, constant LGBT winks, a lot of feminism, and a lot of abortion, which was cited on numerous occasions and clearly encouraged by the organization for this ceremony. Now, beyond the mockery of Christianity, in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, we could see a strong load of symbolism that has nothing to do with sport. This symbolism is not gratuitous. It is part of the predictive programming that the elites employ. They are preparing people for something, something that our minds will not reject or be surprised by when it arrives. For example, at the 2012 London opening ceremony, the figure of death held a large needle in his hand and doctors and nurses danced around him. Weren't you surprised by this theme for announcing a sporting event? We were being prepared for the pandemic. Our implicit memory had already seen it, and when it came, we accepted it with resignation, but without opposition. At the ceremony this past Friday, we saw a kind of hologram with a faceless rider on a silver horse. In another passage of the ceremony, another faceless rider rides a white horse, this time real, followed by all the flags of the competing nations. Many have interpreted this mysterious rider as an allusion to the Antichrist. Let us read Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. In ancient times, the white horse was reserved for the leader of the army, and he would ride it when they returned home after a victory, as part of a triumphal march. But if they did not win, he would not ride the white horse. At the end of Revelation, we will see that Jesus appears on a white horse even before fighting, because he has already won. 
But before Jesus comes, another will appear who will give the impression of being the Messiah, but he is not. That is the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a character who will intervene in the history of this world at the end of time, just at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. The word Antichrist comes from the Greek term Antichrist, Antichristos, an expression that means instead of Christ or against Christ. In this sense, this demonic being will enjoy the power and support of Satan to oppose the entire spirit and doctrine of Christ, as well as attempt to usurp his name by impersonating him. His appearance on the world stage opens the seven-year period of the Great Tribulation. Now, what happened last Friday 26th at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games has surpassed all limits. Putting drag queens representing Jesus and the Apostles is an insult to all of us who believe in God. Here sport doesn't matter. They just want to push homosexuality and destroy the family. The Olympics no longer hide the satanic rituals that were previously speculated to be performed in secret. We can observe that people prefer to honor the creation rather than the creator. This behavior reflects a significant deviation from spiritual values, as mentioned in the Bible. In the last days, there will arise scoffers, individuals who will mock what is sacred. The saddest thing is that people enjoy this without realizing that they are sealing their own doom. Scripture also warns us that God is not mocked. This statement is a solemn reminder that any attempt to discredit or ridicule the divine will not go unnoticed in the eyes of God. Those who mock the sacred and promote symbolism contrary to divinity are ignoring this crucial warning. The wrath of God is about to be poured out, and those who participate in these taunts, whether consciously or unconsciously, will face the consequences of their actions. This phenomenon of mockery and symbolism is nothing new. It has been a recurring tactic throughout history to discredit and divert the faithful from their beliefs. However, the frequency and intensity with which it occurs at large-scale events such as the Olympic Games is alarming. Society seems to have reached a point where the sacred is trivialized and the profane is celebrated. It is crucial to remember that these acts not only offend believers, but they also directly challenge God. The Bible repeatedly warns of the consequences of such acts, indicating that in the end, times we will see an increase in mockery and blasphemy. Let's read in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, knowing this first, that there will come in the last days scoffers, walking according to their own lusts. In our days, many men in their insolent boldness manifest their arrogance by ignoring or ridiculing God. But on that day of God's wrath, men will realize that this is not their world, their insolent mouths will be shut, and their knees will bow before the glory and majesty of the one who sits on the throne. In Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14 it says, The great day of the Lord is near, near, and very near. The voice of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man there will cry out. The term Great Day of the Lord, used more than 25 times in the Bible, does not necessarily refer to a specific day. It speaks of God's time. The idea is that now is the day of man, but the day of man will not last forever. One day the Messiah will put an end to the day of man and bring in the Great Day of Jehovah. It is a day of wrath because man will not give up without a fight and because humanity will receive the just punishment for its rebellion against the Lord. Now man is proud and does what he wants, without taking God into account at any time. But it will only be necessary for God to start shaking the world a little, so that all men will realize that this is not their world, but that they are here with God's permission. The truth is that no person or nation can escape the consequences of their own sins. God will burst their bubble at any moment and bring them back to reality. And at that time, when man's haughtiness has been brought low and his pride humbled, he will have to recognize that only God will be exalted on that day. And here are these texts, so that while there is still time, man may repent and seek God. For believers, this is a call to remain firm in their faith and not to be influenced by trends of mockery and contempt towards the sacred. 
May the love of God continue to shine in our hearts, since all that is happening is a sign of the end times. Therefore, we can say with joy that our redemption is closer than ever. We know that our Lord Jesus Christ will come again, and this is what is really important.